Hi, George here. And this time around, I'll be showing you how to take a photograph, remove the subject, and use that to place a studio background behind that subject. Now I'll make this studio background here just for this video. If you want to get the Photoshop Elements file, I have over here the completed file. And if you want to get the original image right here, the download for the original image, you can get all of that if you are a member of my channel. It's one of the member perks in here, along with a step-by-step -step how to do this project. I'll tell you more about that at the end of this video. Okay, we'll start off here with the original image. I'll just close this down, get that out of the way. Here's the original. And the first thing I want to do is to crop this down to the right size. I want to have this a vertical size as opposed to this horizontal size. You don't have to do a crop if you don't want to. This works the same way either way, but I want a vertical for this video here. So let's go ahead and we'll grab our crop tool. I have my crop set at five by seven. It's just the five by seven ratio. It isn't actually five by seven. It just fits that top to bottom. And I'll move it over here a bit so that her face is a bit more towards the center of the image. Back up just a little bit. I don't want to have too little space left hand side. So kind of like that I think is centered nicely on this. Hit that check mark. There we go. There's our basic crop on this. Okay. We now need to have some duplicate layers in here. The first one I want to do, right click and duplicate. Choose OK. This is just making a safety. This background has now become my safety layer. In case things get messed up, I can always go back to this layer. They won't, but just in case, I always have a habit of doing that. Let's now select out our subject. Use any technique that you want. It doesn't matter. I'll show you what I'm doing right here in Photoshop Elements 2024. Go to Select, come down to Subject. And this gives me a basic selection like that. Now, for whatever reason, in 2024, it automatically pops me over here into the selection brush, which I think is a bit odd since what I really want is just to see that selection right there. So there we go. Using an earlier version, this is what you'll get. Or if you just want to hand draw your selection like this, that's fine. This is right about where I want it on the hair. There's some little thin wispy hairs in here. It's kind of right, right in the middle of where the wispy hairs are. That's perfect. A little bit any selection tool, I just use the polygonal lasso tool. I want to come down here to refine edge. I have my feathering set at one pixel. Just to soften things up just a little bit. Hit refine edge. I think I'll go to overlay. There we go. And then on this one, because of this fine hair in here, I'm going to set this with a smart radius. And I'll set the radius at 10. If you want to find out why I'm using those particular settings, I'll put a link for a video where I explain all this in the description. I won't need any of this stuff in here and I won't need to decontaminate colors. This is just fine. I also want to be outputting this when we get down there to a new layer with layer mask. Okay, so now take the Refine Radius tool right here. This is the default size of 35. You can go larger if you want to. I think this is okay on this. And I'm going to start left-hand side. I'm just going to brush right over where her hair is. Everything else is okay. It's just around the hair that I'm concerned. I want to get some of that thin stuff in there and not have a hard edge along that hair. So I'll just brush right along that edge. And then Photoshop Elements go in and clean that edge up for us. There we go. And right down through here. And that looks good. Maybe a little bit right down over in here. Okay, so that's taken care of. Let's go ahead. We're going to output this again to the new layer with layer mask. Choose OK. Here's our new layer. Now, if I look down here, there's a few things that are a bit wrong. The hair looks fine. The pants are just a little bit odd right down here, and the hand's kind of missing down there. We'll fix those on the layer mask. So double click on the layer mask side, get that light blue outline. I'll just zoom in on this. I'm using the scroll wheel on my mouse for that zoom. If you don't have that set up and you have a scroll wheel, it's just up here under the edit menu. Come down to preferences, general, and it's right here where it says zoom with scroll wheel. Okay. And here, white shows, black hides. I want to find the edge in here. So let's go to our paintbrush. I'll set this to white on the foreground color. And I'll come in. I'm just going to paint this out so I see where the actual edge of that is showing. There we go. And I can see that edge. And I'll come back in and let's clean this up. I'll grab my polygonal lasso tool. Let's now change our feathering here to just zero. I don't want to have any feathering on this. Zero lasso at new selection. And let's make a new selection right along that edge. A bit of the shirt right in here. And then around this belt loop right in here. When you're using this tool, don't click too quickly. Give it a beat or a moment between each click. Or it's going to collapse on you and have to start over again. Just give it a moment. Do your clicks and let elements connect those dots. Out and around. Near the beginning, double click. There's that section. Let's go over here. Changes to add. And I'll add in the in-between or the middle part in here of this loop. You see a little bit of the background right through there. Not much. But we can catch that. And wrap right around here. And there's our selection. Let's now go over to the paintbrush. Make sure you have black in front. Because black hides. And then just paint right along that edge right there. 
Control D to deselect, and there's that bit. Okay, let's pull the spacebar down. Let's move this over here to the other side. We lost our hand right down here. Same exact thing. I want to show that, so let's change our color to white. Let's paint the hand in so I can see where the hand is. There we go. Didn't lose that much, actually. Okay, back up to our polygonal lasso tool. Let's make a new selection right around that hand so we don't lose that hand. Out and around, double click, back to our paintbrush, back to black paint, and paint that in. Okay, Control D. There we go, that fixes those couple of spots that were missed at the bottom. That's fine. Control zero to fit that to screen. Okay, so we have our subject now selected. It's a little bit gray back here. That's perfectly fine because we're giving it a gray background on this. So that's gonna blend in perfectly and we'll keep our fine hairs that way. Okay, come down to the background copy down here. Put a new layer above this. I wanna fill this with a medium gray. So over here to our colors. So right here, here's our grays, left-hand side. Come right about the middle, click and drag clear to the left. So it's right in the middle like that. That's gonna be a medium gray. Choose OK, over your paint bucket, and fill that layer. We'll be using that in just a bit. Let's now reset our colors to black and white. There we go. Make a new layer. Go up here to Filter, come down to Render and Clouds, and it gives you kind of a cloudy pattern in here. I now want to have a darkening on this so it's darker on the outside. So let's go up here to Filter again, come down to Correct Camera Distortion, and in here where it says Vignette, Take both of these sliders all the way to the left-hand side. And that darkens down the outside of this and leaves the inside bright. That's perfect. Choose OK. Let's now blend this into this in behind. We're here to normal. And there are all kinds of options in here. I can darken this down. I can multiply this. A lot of options. What I want is the hard light option right there. Just kind of blends that in with the gray and gives it just a little different look on that. And I want to push this more towards the blue, just a little bit, just to give us some separation. She's very warm, so by making the background more blue, it will help to separate out the foreground from the background. We'll do that with an adjustment layer up here. Go up to Layer, come down to New Adjustment Layer, and Photo Filter. Where it says use previous layer, check that. Choose OK. That links this onto just that one layer. That's what I want. Let's change our filter here to the Cooling Filter 80. Just a nice blue filter. And 25 is pretty good. I think that's just fine. I'll leave that as is. So there's our nice cool coloration on that. And now I want to boost the contrast a little bit here. Let's come back down to our layer two. Go up to layer, adjustment layer, and levels. That should be checked already. Check that okay. And notice that we have this histogram graph in here. Take the black and move that right up against where it begins to go up, which is right about there. Just darkens the black down a little bit. Do the same thing with the white. Move it in where we begin to see that color shift in there and that brightens that up a little bit. So I just want to have my dark and my light, my black and white points right where we're beginning to see some values in there. And that just makes it a bit better. If I show and hide this, there's before and here's after. Just a little bit more of a punch to that. I think that's good. Okay, last thing. She can use some improvement as well. Let's go back up here to her layer. Same thing on that one. Go up to layer, come down to new adjustment layer and levels. Again, check that checkbox, choose OK, and then bring these controls in to where they're just coming into the values. Maybe a little bit more black, but not too much. If you go too far, it does that, blocks up. So you want just a bit more dark in there. I think right about here is pretty good. And the white looks pretty good, the light. I think that's nice. Maybe just a little lighter on the whole image right here. Mostly for our midtones. And right in there. And I think that's looking just about perfect. Notice that we kept these real fine hairs over here. So we didn't lose any of that stuff in there or over on this side. So the hair is masked out perfectly. Background looks good. If you don't like all this detail back here, you may want to bring that down a little bit. That's easy to do. I'll just go over here and just blur this down just a little bit. Go up here to the filter menu, come down to blur and the Gaussian blur. And you can get just a little bit of blur. And I think five is gonna be the number. There's our magic number at five. Choose OK. It just pushes that a little bit further into the background. The real trick here is just getting that nice selection to begin with. And I'll put a link for the video on how to use the refined edge in the description so you can check that one out. And again, if you want to have the Photoshop Elements working file, that's everything over here right hand side. If you want to have this PSD file, and if you also want to have the link for the download for the original image and my step-by-step -step discussion of this project, all of those are member perks. And you can get a lifetime membership right now just by getting my Photo Coach program for Photoshop Elements. 
It's a great program that allows you to ask any question you want about Photoshop Elements. It answers all those things that you may be a little bit fuzzy on. It's a great reference tool, and I'll put a link for that in the description as well. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button. Even if you've watched a lot of my videos, still hit that like button. That really does help my videos a lot. The better visibility I have, the more videos I can do. So hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you do so. Also make sure you hit that bell icon so that you get notifications of my new videos. If you are subscribed, you can still go back and hit that bell icon. I'm doing new videos all the time. If you don't want to miss anything, make sure you get those notifications. And I'll see you next time.